The five W's of colorectal cancer. In this video podcast, we will discuss the important clinical principles relating to colorectal cancer. The presentation objectives are organized into the five W's of colorectal cancer that you should remember. Who develops colorectal cancer? When does colorectal cancer develop? Why are some people at greater risk? Where does colorectal cancer occur? What do colorectal cancer patients present with? And finally, we will discuss how do we diagnose and manage colorectal cancer patients. Who develops colorectal cancer? Colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in men and women and the second leading cause of cancer deaths. When does colorectal cancer develop? Most cases of colorectal cancer are sporadic and occur after the age of 45. However, 15 to 30 percent of colorectal cancer patients have a major hereditary component. These include patients with familial adenomatous polyposis, or FAP, and hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, HNPCC, also known as Lynch syndrome. These patients can develop colorectal cancer much earlier in life. Most colorectal cancers evolve from benign lesions called polyps. Most colorectal cancer cases can be prevented through regular screening and removal of these polyps. Screening guidelines vary according to regional protocols. Why are some people at greater risk? High-risk patients include those with previous colorectal cancer or a family history of FAP or HNPCC. Moderate risk patients include those with previous adenomas, long-standing inflammatory bowel disease, and first-degree relatives with colorectal cancer. Other risk factors include increased age, sedentary lifestyle, increased BMI, poor diet, and smoking. Where does colorectal cancer occur? Colorectal cancer most often starts in gland cells that line the wall of the colon or the rectum. This kind of cancer is called adenocarcinoma of the colon or rectum. Rarer types of colorectal cancer can also develop, including small cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinomas. What do colorectal cancer patients present with? The most common symptoms of colorectal cancer are abdominal pain, change in bowel habit, and blood in the stool. In general, the signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer mirror the three ways that colorectal cancer spreads, as explained in the podcast on mechanisms of cancer spread. Local extension can cause obstruction of the colon or rectum or result in fistulas with nearby structures, for instance, the vagina. Obstructions and peritoneal spread can cause abdominal pain, change in bowel habit, tenesmus, nausea and vomiting, and narrow stools. Lymphatic spread can cause lymph node enlargement. Lymph node spread is often asymptomatic, but can cause supraclavicular lymphadenopathy, abdominal distension, pain and nausea, and vomiting. Metastases can cause symptoms depending on where the cancer is spread, such as respiratory symptoms if there is spread to the lungs, or right upper quadrant pain, hepatomegaly, or jaundice if there is spread to the liver. How do we diagnose and manage colorectal cancer patients? Diagnosis. Sometimes patients present with symptoms and signs of colorectal cancer that we mentioned in the previous section. More often, however, colorectal cancer is asymptomatic and is diagnosed by routine screening or by incidental findings of anemia on blood work. Patients with increased risk require more frequent screening than the general population. Guidelines for screening vary slightly by jurisdiction. In general, for patients with average risk, guidelines may include such tests as an annual digital rectal exam combined with fecal immunochemical tests, FIT, or fecal occult blood tests, FOBT, every two years. If this test is positive, a colonoscopy is done to view the lumen of the rectum and colon and to take biopsies of any suspicious lesions. 
If the biopsy confirms colorectal cancer, then staging investigations may be done, which may include a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, chest x-ray, or other imaging tests, as well as serum CEA levels and tests for metastases if they are clinically indicated. Treatment. If the treatment is for curative intent, surgery is the main primary treatment. Adjuvant therapy may also be used in addition to surgery for higher stage cancers. For cancer of the colon, often adjuvant chemotherapy is given after surgery. For rectal cancer, both radiation and chemotherapy may be given. Radiation can be given as a single modality or in conjunction with chemotherapy prior to surgery. Postoperatively, adjuvant chemotherapy may also be delivered. Commonly, decisions regarding treatment may involve conversations between medical and radiation oncologists as well as surgeons. If the treatment is for a palliative intent, chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment. Those with poor performance status may do better on a single agent treatment, while those with good performance status may benefit from a combination therapy. Radiation may also be used for control of metastases or control of symptoms such as pain and bleeding. This concludes our short introduction to the five W's of colorectal cancer. For further information, you can refer to the colorectal cancer module on learnoncology.ca. Thank you.